what that music say? Yes, sir, Amos. That music say, good health to all from Rexall. The Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, featuring Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Lillian Randolph, Roy Glenn, Vincent Townsend, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, Amos and Andy. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Charles Correll. In next week's issue of Life, and in the current issue of The Country Gentleman, there's a half-page ad on Rexall's famous vitamin product called Plenamins. I sincerely believe it'll pay you to read it carefully. The information it contains can meet, mean much better health for you and your family. For Plenamins, are one of the best balanced multivitamin formulas money can buy. Whenever you think of vitamins, remember Plenamins. P-L-E-N-A... M-I-N-S, at Rexall Drugstores Everywhere. Well, a new apartment hotel, the Wentworth Arms, has just opened in the neighborhood. It's the last word in everything. And a lot of the Kingfish's friends, including Andy Brown, have moved in. The Kingfish's wife, Sapphire, spent the whole day over at the new hotel. And when she got back home, she had some news for the kingfish. George, you know that new hotel they built over on the boulevard? Oh, yeah. They put up a beautiful place. You know, George, it's got 372 rooms. They built the regular palace. Well, today I got you a job over there as a waiter. <laughs> How could anybody put up such a miserable dump, huh? <laughs> now, George, it's all settled. You is going to be a waiter, and I'm going to be a chambermaid. But wait a minute, chair, honey. Why, Andy's living over there, and I would be disgraced doing that. George, we need the money, so we're taking the job. Me, a uh, Stevens, a waiter. Think of the stigma on my family name. <laughs> what would my dear old daddy have said if he'd know his darling boy wound up as a hashlinger? George, what is you talking about? Your papa wasn't no better than you is. Now, wait a minute, chair. So happened my father was a man who was looked up to and admired. Don't forget he spent four years in medical school. I'll say he did. He was the best exhibit they ever had. Well, he is, it was all for science. He didn't join no freak shows like some of your relatives. George, none of my family was freaks. What about your cousin Florentine? Last Christmas, we had to send her four earrings. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's somebody at the door. I I I'll get it. Telegram from Mr. Stevens. Uh, thank you. Hmm. Didn't even wait for a tip. He, I guess he'd been here before. <laughs> Who's the telegram from, George? Open it up. Well, it can't be from any of your relatives that didn't come collect. <laughs> Let me see here. Holy mackerel. Sapphire is from my wealthy great aunt Harriet. She's arriving in town tomorrow to visit us. Honey, we in big trouble. Well, now, I'm going to tell you, I've been writing her all these years how well I've been doing here in New York City. Well, what in the world has you done that for, George? Now she's going to find out you's a bum. <laughs> well, I, I was looking out for our future. You see, she's got a big business in Chicago, and she goes around visiting all the relatives, looking for the right man to take over when she goes on. Well, George, when she finds out that we is a waiter and a chambermaid in the Wentworth Hotel, there goes our future. What you gonna do? Well, I don't know, but I done worked all these years to get my foot on the gravy train, and I tell you at this late date, ain't nobody gonna sidetrack my giblets. I tell you that. <laughs> oh, me, and Great Aunt Harriet gets into town this evening. Yeah, and tomorrow you and Sapphire starts that job at the Wentworth Arms, huh? And uh, lucky that you ain't got no relatives to bother you like this. You know it and worry for it. Yeah, well, I didn't have no big family to start with. And a couple of years back, when my Uncle Henry fell in the jute mill at the state pen, it stripped my family tree clean as a whistle. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, Andy, uh, I got to think of something. 
Well, let's see. You told her you was a big shot, and I remember them big shots is always taking trips abroad and everything like that. Yeah, but I, uh, but I, uh, 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 see. Wait a minute, Anna. Yeah, you done hit on something there. I got it. Look here. At supper tonight, I'll tell Aunt Harriet that me and Sapphire embark tomorrow on the Queen Mary for Paris and London. Yeah, tell her you was barking all over the place. <laughs> and then she'll pack up and leave, you see. She'll never know that me and Sapphire is working as a chambermaid and a waiter at the Wentworth Hotel. Yeah, but wait a minute. Is Sapphire going to go along with this? Oh, she got to, Andy. She knows how important it is. Uh, you told that old gal, though, you was a real big shot up here. Ain't she going to expect to meet some of your society friends? Well, Andy... You may be just a big fat crumb, but tonight you is going to be the whole upper crust. You. Well, uh, lovely dinner, wasn't it, Aunt Harriet? Oh, yes, I think Sapphire done wonders. Especially when you tell me your butler and cook is off tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, we caught the upstairs maid working downstairs, and the downstairs maid working upstairs. And the union made us fire both of them, you see. Aunt Harriet, Andy, would you folks care to demitasse it in the living room? Well, you all go ahead. If it's okay with you, I'd rather ham bone it in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, Andy, you go on in the living room. I'll get the coffee. Yeah, uh, let me take you on, Aunt Harriet. George, I don't like to criticize your friend, but you said Mr. Brown was a member of society. Why, when he ate, he tied his napkin around his neck. Mm, yeah, I noticed that. Well, you see, uh, we had liver and bacon tonight, and Mr. Brown happens to be a surgeon. And he just natural covers up like that when he go to work on the infernal organs, you see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Brown, I understand you as a doctor. Yours must be fascinating work. Oh, yeah, Mr. Brown here has done a lot of work with the MDs, uh, the PhDs, and the AMA. Well, listen, Kingfish, you don't have to spell them things out. Aunt Harriet here looked like a gal that's been around. What's that? Uh, <laughs> uh, the doctor here is noted for his great sense of humor, Aunt Harriet. Yeah, that's right. At my last operation, the patient laughs off much. He fell right off the table. <laughs> oh, here he is. You sit right here, Aunt Harriet. And he's there. Thank you, Sapphire. I must say you and George has a charming home here. Yeah, it's uh, going to be too bad to leave the place, too. You're leaving? Oh, why, yes, Ann Harrod. I almost forgot to tell you. Uh, me and my charming wife here are sailing for Europe in the morning. Going to Europe? Oh, yes, we're just popping over on the Queen Mary. Oh, yeah, the first thing in the morning, we pops over on the poop deck and pops over to Paris. <laughs> But I planned to visit you for a week. Couldn't you postpone this trip? No, no, no. You see, the big businessman like me gets what they call a Wall Street stomach. Uh, doctors uh, here tells me that I need a trip for my health. Uh, don't I, Dr. Brown? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, ain't nothing like getting aboard a ship and getting a little fresh air and sunshine on your gallbladder. <laughs> well, see, I really wanted to see New York this trip. But I suppose I'll just have to go back to Chicago first thing in the morning. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame, Aunt yeah. Harriet, that you have to leave like this. Yeah, it <laughs> sure is. Uh, it's very sad, all right. Uh, by the way, if you want to look up the next train, I just happen to have a timetable on me here. <laughs> uh, yeah, you will. Uh, you'll find the Chicago train circle there. Yeah. Oh, thank you, George. Thank you. But I'm so glad I came anyway to see how well you was doing. And believe me, George, when the day comes for someone to take over my business, I don't have to tell you who it's going to be. Yeah, well, I appreciate that very much, uh, Andy, dear. Now, I guess you want to pack, and I know Sapphire will get in there and help you right now. Get in there. Yes, you? yes, of course. <laughs> Come on, Aunt Harriet. All right. Goodbye, Doctor. I said goodbye, Doctor. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, you'll have to excuse Dr. Brown, uh, Aunt Harriet. Uh, on his last three operations, he's been working a little too close to the ether. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So long, Aunt Harriet. Hot dog, Andy. Now she'll go back to Chicago and never know that me and Sapphire is a chambermaid and a waiter at the Wentworth Arms Hotel. Yeah, but I think I'll go back in the kitchen and work on that liver some more. Sapphire <laughs> broke up dinner right in the middle of the operation. Yeah. 
That's right, driver. I want to go to the Grand Central Station. I'm catching the 915 back to Chicago. Oh, well, you got plenty of time, ma'am. Yeah, we're making plenty of time. Is you been visiting up here in New York? Well, I was going to stay with my nephew and his wife, but they's going away tomorrow. Oh, I'd like to see New York, but I just don't know where I could stay. Yeah, well, I know a wonderful place right here in the neighborhood. I, I could take you over there right now, and you could register this evening. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Is it a nice place? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's brand new. It's called the Wentworth Arms. You know <laughs> evening. This is your Rexall family druggist. And this evening, I have a surprise for you. Standing beside me is Mr. Justin Dart, president of the Rexall Drug Company. He is here because he wishes to deliver personally an important message to Rexall family druggists everywhere. I know that all of the members of our vast Rexall family realize the importance of participating in next Tuesday's election. Voting is more than a privilege. It's a sacred obligation of all who enjoy the greatest blessing on the face of this troubled earth, American citizenship. As leaders in your communities, I ask you to urge your employees, your friends, and your customers to vote next Tuesday. Rexall Druggists can render no greater service to their country. Thank you. I'll get this servant caught back in the kitchen. Well, it ain't going to be bad being a waiter here at the Wentworth Homes. Special as they got me on room service. After all... George, George, I got to talk to you right away. Uh, hi there, Sapphire. You don't look bad in your chambermaid in uniform there. Yeah, real chic there. The way that little cap covers up your ball spot on top of the head there. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind that, George. Who do you think I've seen in the hall? Great Aunt Harriet. Great Aunt Harriet? Yes. Holy smokes. Sapphire, did she see you? No, no, I ducked quick. But I found out from the desk she's registered in room 411. 411, holy mackerel. You know, I picked up some breakfast dishes from there an hour ago, and I noticed there was an upper plate on the dresser. You know, I had a funny feeling at that time that I had seen them choppers grinning at me someplace else. <laughs> Do. She thinks we sail for Europe. Oh, me? If she sees us working here, my chances of getting a big job with her company is gone forever. George, I don't know what we're going to do. Well, now, look, honey, tomorrow's our day off. If we can just get through the day without running into her. I tell you what, I'll work out something. Andy's staying here in the hotel. Maybe he can help me. All right, George, but we just can't run into her today. Oh, me. How could such a horrible thing happen to such a good, honest, clean-living couple like us? I just... <laughs> Kingfish, thanks for bringing my supper up here to my room. Say, by the way, you ain't running to Aunt Harriet yet, is you? No, no, Andy, but what a break. And I goes off duty in ten minutes. Yeah, well, if she ever sees you in that white waiter's coat, you're going to be a dead pigeon, all right. Yeah, tomorrow's our day off, so I'll have the whole day to work out something, you see. Yeah. Uh, I'll call you later, and I'll go in now. Okay, so. Well, let me sneak down the hall here. George Stevens! Oh, oh, great Aunt Harriet! George, what is you doing here when you're supposed to be on the poop deck of the Queen Mary? <laughs> well, uh, uh, Aunt Harriet, you see, uh, uh, that is, uh, well, I really, I, I, uh, d- d- uh, uh, <laughs> George, you and Sapphire wasn't lying to me about going to Europe, was you? Oh, no, no, uh, like I told you yesterday, uh, Aunt dear, uh, I was a sick man, uh, we done postponed the trip, uh, we're going on the next boat. Oh, I see, well, uh. George, what is you doing with that white coat on? Uh, what white coat is that? The one you're wearing. Oh, oh, this white coat. Yeah, oh, this one, uh... George, I'm waiting for an explanation. Well, give me time. I'm doing the best I can for a sick man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you see, uh, I, I, I'm sick, and, uh, uh, like I say, I, I wasn't feeling so good, and this is Dr. Brown's room right here in the hotel, so I come over here to have him give me an examination. Uh, this is the doctor's white coat. Well, I thought in an examination, the doctor wore the white coat. 
Well, now, you know how all them great doctors got their little eccentricities. Uh, uh, some of them sharpen a knife on the bottom of the shoe sole, you know. Uh, some won't take out a ruptured appendix unless there's an R in the month, you know, all them things. <laughs> Dr. Brown got uh, his little eccentricity, too. Uh, when he makes examination, he puts the white coat on the patient and he takes off his clothes. You see, that's what he... <laughs> now, uh, uh, you'll have to excuse me and her. The doctor just give me uh, a streptomycin uh, tablet and I won't run home before the thing start micing on me right here in the lobby. You see what I mean? <laughs> uh, I'll call you later, Aunt Harry. So long, so long. Goodbye. Hmm... I forgot about Dr. Brown living here at the hotel. George must really be sick. I ain't never heard anyone that delirious. Well, I have to hand it to you, George. That was quick thinking when Aunt Harriet caught you coming out of Andy's room. Yeah, we got a break, uh, and tomorrow's our day off. That'll help. But, George, sooner or later, she's bound to find out we is a chambermaid and a waiter at the hotel. No, she ain't, honey. We ain't trapped yet. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, uh, wait a minute, I'll get it. Uh, hello? George, this is Aunt Harriet. Uh, oh, oh, Aunt Harriet. Uh, uh, just about to call you. Uh, we're sailing again for Europe in the morning, Aunt Harriet. Well, I'm glad I got you, George, because I'm not feeling a bit well either. I'd like to have your friend, Dr. Brown, examine me. Oops, the day they dropped the phone here. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Aunt Harriet. Uh, you say something there about Dr. Brown, didn't you? What did what you say about him? Well, I know he's staying over here at the hotel, and I'd like to have him examine me. Mm, uh, well, uh, I tell you, uh, he won't be able to. He's busy with an appendix operation. Well, he can see me after that. Well, it may be a long wait. I think he's taking out his own appendix. I I'll call him, though. <laughs> so long, Aunt Harriet. Oh, dear. George, what is you going to do? Well, I got two choices. I can either commit suicide or go see Algonquin J. Calhoun. <laughs> and I is desperate, and I'm going to do the worst one. I'm going to see Calhoun. That's what I'm <laughs> Oh, Calhoun, I'm glad you got back. I've been waiting here in your office for an hour. Where in the world has you been? Well, I've been in Coat Kingfish. You see, about three weeks ago when I was driving down the boulevard, I, I didn't see this fella in the crosswalk, and I hit him and broke one of his legs and knocked him 40 feet in the air. I've been in Coat suing him. Wait a minute, Chair. You knocked him 40 feet in the air. Yeah. On what grounds is you suing him? Leaving the scene of an accident. <laughs> now, listen, Calhoun. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, something has done backfired on me. Yeah. Now, here's the story. I done told my rich Aunt Harriet yeah. that Andy was a doctor. Uh -huh. And now she wants Dr. Brown to examine her. Uh, and she made an appointment with him at 3 o'clock in the Wentworth's arms. I can't go through with that. Well, now, wait a minute, Jack Kingfish. There's only one thing to do. You got to get Aunt Harriet out of that hotel before Andy examine her. Yeah, well, if I get out of the hotel, all my troubles would be over. But how I going to do it? Now, think of something there. How I going to get out there? Well, now, wait a minute, Chair. Now, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, think of something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suppose, suppose the manager of the hotel thought she was an undesirable guest. Mm -hmm. Like a, uh, well, like a gambler. Uh, maybe a pool shark. <laughs> yeah, notorious pool shark. Yeah. Who has moved in here to jip the guests. Yeah. yeah. Tell the manager she is Jack the Ripper of the side pocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, Andy can help me, too. I'll get him. Yeah, yeah, then they'll throw her right out of the place. Oh, that's a great idea, Calhoun. Yeah, now you get on out of here and let me rest. I done had a long day in court. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me this. How did your case come out? Well, right off the bat, that crazy judge wanted to throw the thing out of court. But I didn't sit down for that. Yeah, oh, you didn't, huh? No, no, sir. I went up to the judge's bench and I pounded on the desk. I demanded my rights. I ranted and I roared to the top of my voice. 
And then I pleaded. I pleaded for my rights. And then I cried. And I sobbed. And I stamped my feet and beat on my chest. I shook my fist. And I fell on like that for an hour. And then at the end of it, the judge handed down his decision. You won the kill? No, I got 30 days for the stab of the people. <laughs> Now, here is your Rexall Family Druggist. With winter just around the corner, Rexall Family Druggists are announcing a great new Rexall product. It's called Lozothrysin, and it promises both quick relief for coughs and throat irritation of colds. In pleasant-tasting cherry menthol-flavored wafers, Rexall's men of science have combined the pain relief of aspirin with the antibiotic action of tyrothrysin. In that way, Lozothrysin wafers not only soothe irritated throats, relieve dryness, huskiness, and soreness, but also inhibit many bacteria. Make it a point now to add Rexall Lozothrysin to your family medicine chest. That's L-O-Z-O-T-H-R-I-C-I-N. Lozothrysin. One more proof that you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Yes, Mr. Manager, that is the whole sad story. Stevens, you mean to say we have a pool shark in the house? Uh, yes, sir, Miss Thompson. Uh, that sweet old lady in 411, who is registered under the name of Harriet Williams, is, is none other than that infamous gambler and pool shark, Pool Hall Polly, alias Snooker Sally, <laughs> alias Billiard Ball Bessie. That's who she is. <laughs> well, I can hardly believe this. I've seen her in the lobby. She's such a dear old lady. Dear old lady, huh. mm-hmm. besides being a pool shark, she is one of the most notorious gamblers and horse players in the United States. In fact, that happens to be a dummy hearing aid she is wearing. The thing is a direct wire to all tracks. <laughs> oh, yeah. While she's sitting in the lobby there knitting, she may look like Whistler's mother, but she's actually getting the morning line from Hialeah. <laughs> Why, I never heard of anything like this in my life. It's just too fantastic to be true. Oh, that's true, all right. She is going to get someone in this hotel, and if you don't get out of here, you go... Uh... Hey, I demand to see the manager. I has been gypped. Hmm, it happened sooner than I thought. Well, I'm the manager. You say you've been gypped? I'll say I is. I've been a guest here since the hotel opened, and I thunk it was a nice hotel up to a half hour ago. Well, what happened then? Well, I was sitting in the billiard room after breakfast, picking my teeth. When a sweet-looking old lady sat down next to me and asked me when the morning service has begun. Then she whipped out a pool cue out of her knitting bag, chalked it once, racked up the balls, and the next thing I knowed, I was standing there in my BVD. Yeah, this sounds just like the woman I was telling you about. Why, this is ridiculous. Well, you ain't heard the half of it. When I come down from putting on another pair of pants... She was in the middle of a poker game with four old gentlemen. You mean to say she was cheating them? Cheating them? Why, she must have had an extra deck of cards hid in her handkerchief. In her handkerchief? Yeah, because while I watched her, she blew her nose and filled the inside straight. (laughs) Well, Mr. Thompson, uh, there's more things for you to do is to kick this old lady out of the hotel before she causes any more trouble. Stevens, I've been a hotel manager for a good many years. And I know just what to do when someone comes to me with a story like this. Yeah, well, fine, Mr. Thompson. I know you does. And if I was you, I'd take fast action on it. I certainly will. I know how to handle it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, come on, total stranger. I'll walk out with you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Andy. He fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Ha, <laughs> ha, what a dope. You know, while we was at it, I should have... Put in a claim there for that suit of clothes that she done billiard balled me out of, you know? Yeah, honey, after that story me and Andy give him, why, 
The manager going to throw out Aunt Harriet right out of the hotel. Oh, George, this is wonderful. Now we can keep the job and you'll be in line to take over her business in Chicago. She still thinks we're big shots. Oh, yeah, it's nothing. To, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'll get it. Well, well, uh, great Aunt Harriet, uh, uh, come over to Wishes Bon Voyage before we sail in the morning, huh? George, the manager of the hotel just come to me and told me that ridiculous story that you and that phony Dr. Brown told him about me. Well, now, wait a minute, Aunt Harriet. And he also told me that you and Sapphire here is a waiter and chambermaid at the hotel. But, Aunt Harriet... You're just like every other member of the family. I thought I'd find one that had a decent job and wouldn't be broke. Yeah, but Aunt Harriet... I'm going back to Chicago and run my own business. George Stevens, you is a faux flusher, just like every other member of the family. I tell you, you ain't nothing... Yeah, Amos, that's what happened. Aunt Harriet went back to Chicago in a big huff. Yeah, well, Andy, that's what the kingfish done when he tried to put on the bluff, you see. He always putting on the dog and the yeah. bluff or something like that. He should have told her the truth in the first place. Yeah, I know it. Now, there ain't no chance of him getting the big job with her company. Well, you can't blame Aunt Harriet for getting mad. She come to New York expecting the kingfish to be a wealthy man and a smart man and all that stuff, you see. Mm, yeah. Must have been a big disappointment for her, the kingfish turning out to be a four-flusher. Yeah, and with the kingfish out of the thing, now I guess Aunt Harriet is going to go on being a big career woman herself. Yes, Sadie, I got back from New York this morning. I just had to telephone you. Yeah, I'm back on the job. That nephew of mine wasn't well to do at all. He turned out to be a waiter and his wife's a chambermaid. And I expected so much from him. Harriet, what are you doing loafing in my office? Oh, uh, well, sir, I, I was... Uh, you get back to your mangle. You the biggest full flush you have in this laundry. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox with the tip of the week. Next week's issues of Life, Look, Colliers, the Saturday Evening Post, and the current issue of Country Gentlemen carry a full-page Rexall ad. And here's what it contains. Fifty guaranteed Rexall products, everything from vitamin values to household needs. Plus, three great new Rexall products you'll want to add to your family medicine chest immediately. Plus, two super specials on Christmas cards. Plus... Six deep-cut bargains, good from November 5th through the 22nd only. For the sake of your family budget, for the sake of your family's health, don't fail to check Rexall's full-page ad in next week's Life, Look, Colliers, The Post, and The Current Country Gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Freeman Gosden. As Mr. Justin Dart, president of the Rexall Drug Company, reminded you earlier in the show, next Tuesday is Election Day. My partner Charlie Carell and I also want to urge all Americans to vote in this important national election next Tuesday. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll see you next Sunday. Good night. For the one woman in ten with sensitive skin... There's Caranome, the beauty aids that are hypoallergenic, carefully compounded of fine, pure, mild ingredients, safe for most sensitive skins. There's a safe, pure Caranome beauty aid for every possible need. Created especially for the one woman in ten with sensitive skin. And sold at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Be sure to be with us again at this same time next Sunday when your Rexall druggist will again present the Amos and Andy Show, directed by Cliff Howell. Stay tuned for the Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy program, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>